An enigmatic smile on a woman from the 16th century. A timeless face looking at us from down the centuries. Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, The Mona Lisa, was completed in 1517. I say completed while keeping in mind one of Leonardo's quotes. A painting is never finished, only abandoned. Various sources put the time taken to complete it as between 4 and 16 years. Some say it was never completed. Before we take a good look, we must acknowledge its status as the most famous painting in the world. Because of this, it is a victim of its own success, barely able to be seen at the Louvre for the throng of people wanting to get a selfie with her. She has become a celebrity, even though she is long gone. It's hard to imagine the work being appreciated in the way it was intended to be, by standing in front of her. Leonardo da Vinci, who lived from 1452 to 1519, was an Italian polymath who excelled in so many fields and was interested in so many subjects, it's hard to believe all of this genius was wrapped up in one mind. He was fascinated by anatomy, a subject he used to great effect when painting, seemingly understanding the underlying structures of muscles and bones as he painted people. Of course, as artists know, if you only paint what you actually see, you don't need to understand the underpinnings. But his work is so good we have to acknowledge that he had allowed his understanding of anatomy to at least help train him to see. Mona Lisa is painted in oil on wood panel. It is unexpectedly small when seen for the first time. The half or three quarter length portrait style is well known to us today, but it was Leonardo who invented or at least popularised it. Mona Lisa, in English we might say Madame Lisa or Lady Lisa, is a portrait of Lisa del Giocondo, an Italian noblewoman. There are a few things you'll notice on first viewing. Unlike contemporary and later portraits by other artists, there is no overt display of wealth. Yes, her clothes are fine, but there's no necklace, no bejeweled hair comb, no rings on her fingers. Leonardo wanted no distractions from that face. The whole composition, her dark clothing and dark hair, the atmospheric background, all move us toward her face. She has a certain beauty, but, but is not overtly stunning for her looks. But we find ourselves attracted to her. Why? Her skin glows. This effect is achieved through multiple glazes, laying down very thin layers of pigment suspended in oil, creating depth and a luminosity we see but find difficult to comprehend as merely paint on board. Some accounts suggest there are up to 40 layers of glaze on her face. Her face is on a slight angle, allowing her eyes to move to our right to see us. She is looking at us and we return the favour. I have noted in other portrait videos that our own gaze seeks first to find the eyes of another, and within that, the closest eye. This is not just in paintings, this is how we see in the real world. Painters long after Leonardo worked out that in the real world, our sharp focus covers only a small fraction of what we see, the rest being filled in by less sharply defined material that other parts of our eyes see. We think we see a sharp end-to-end -end image, but we don't. This is the basis for many optical illusions, and also plays a role in the popularity of Impressionist paintings. That Leonardo understood this all the way back in the 16th century is supported by two parts of the painting, the background and the smile. The background is atmospheric, lacking in fine detail. It is painted to be distant, allowing the cooler blues of the far distance to complement the warmth and detail of her face, bringing it forward. The closer, warmer parts of the background are well away from her face, not competing with it. Now for the smile. When our normal gaze starts with the eyes, try it. The smile, just outside our main area of focus, the smile is there. But when our focus is only on the mouth, try that, the smile is less obvious. Here's the mouth just on its own. And here is the whole face again. Keep your focus on the eyes, your normal starting point. The smile is there, enigmatic. Move your gaze to the mouth and it is gone, or at least reduced. 
people argue over that too. What on earth is going on? Mona Lisa's smile has been the subject of countless conjectures and treatises. But could it be that the self-taught student of anatomy had worked out how he perceived the world and used his knowledge to create his own subtle optical illusion? Of all the objects we perceive in the world, our brains seem to have a large component dedicated to understanding faces, the differences between them and the emotions displayed through them. Coupled with our roving but narrow centre of real focus, a face as a whole can appear different to any component on its own. What to believe? We say of some people that they are hard to read. We say of others that he was smiling with his mouth, but his eyes weren't smiling. We are attuned to these very subtle nuances of human behaviour. We fancy we can tell when people are lying, because the individual components don't add up to the perceived whole, even if we can't name which parts are out of kilter. With Mona Lisa, we sense, at the very border of our intuition, that she is displaying a smile for the portrait sitting, but not fully smiling inwardly. We sense there is more going on. She is a complex person, not just the wife of Francesco del Giocondo, not just some local beauty worthy of a portrait in the restrictions of 16th century sensibilities. She too has hopes and dreams. She too is a whole person with understandings, intuitions, desires, annoyances. She is a real person with her own inner life. That Leonardo has captured this is why that smile has become one of the most talked about in human history. The enigmatic smile of Mona Lisa. There one moment and then not so clear. If Leonardo did this on purpose, and I think his years of working on it suggest he did, then it is a masterstroke, a fully realised peering behind the curtain of the veil of flesh of our outward face, a glimpse of her soul. Can you paint a soul, the true essence of a person? Leonardo has attempted just exactly that. That Mona Lisa is the most famous painting in the world is not by accident. Unlike some modern celebrities that seem to be famous just because they are famous, the Mona Lisa is Leonardo's message from down the centuries. There is more going on inside than is at first obvious from merely looking at a person. Our inner lives are a deep well. We could expend a lifetime understanding another person fully. That he was able to put all of this as oil on panel is a remarkable achievement, worthy of our ongoing gaze, worthy of being called a masterpiece. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please press like. If you want to be notified when I put out more reactions to great art, please subscribe. See you next time.